morning, we get to continue our awakening series. Now, I will tell you, when I was thinking about what God was wanting me to share with you, what he's really laid on my heart this week is most of the time, what keeps us from from awakening what God wants us to do in our lives, what keeps us from the, the dreams and the passion that God has for us is too often fear. Fear, not faith. And this week, I think God wanted me to share with you about how fear will often make us do crazy things and, 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 and act irrational instead of just walking in fear. Have you ever felt like when you were afraid? Have you ever felt like uh, the enemy telling that you're just not worthy enough, you can't do it, or, or things pop in your mind that the what ifs, I mean, what could happen, and, and you get all consumed with that? One night, not too long ago, Terry and I were laying in the bed. It was about 3 o'clock in the morning, and all of a sudden, we were sound asleep, sleeping wonderful. The alarms go off on the house, our house alarm. I mean, everything's go crazy. Somebody, you know, you wake up in the dead of sleep, loud, sirens blasting. Now, this is, this is how it happened. I jump up. I'm trying to find my shoes. I'm grabbing one pair or another. Before I know it, Terry looks like Rambo. She's got a, an ammo belt thrown around her shoulder. She's got an AR-15 in one hand, a 45 in the other. She's hitting the door. She's ready to take anybody that's coming down. I will tell you, if you show up at my house late at night, you don't have to worry about me. My wife will shoot you. I'm just saying. But in the middle of this, scared out of death, Terry, she's reacting. Somebody has, is, is coming after her babies, and she's not going to let that happen. She's going for battle, and I've got two different pairs of shoes on. I am totally disoriented, and I'm like, what is going on? Michael comes racing out of his room. The dog is going crazy, barking. The alarms are going off. Matthew's nowhere to be found. I, I, I don't know which way to turn. In my mind, I think about all these scenarios of how people are coming through the door or through the window or something. And, and all these scenarios about what could happen are going through my mind. And then I realize it's not what happened at all. We soon figured out that in the middle of the night, Michael had rolled over and hit the window with his hand and had set the the window breakage sensor off. <laughs> but man, we had felt that rush and all these thoughts had went through my mind about things that could have been but just were not so. It's what fear does to you. Fear makes you to go places that you don't want to go. Fear makes you act ways you don't want to act. And most of the time, those are, there's no reason to do that. It's the enemy playing in your mind most of the time. Funny thing about that story was the next morning we get up, Matthew, we were still looking for him. We didn't know what had happened to him. He was sound asleep. He slept through the whole thing. He was resting peacefully. And I think that's a good picture of how people walk when they have the trust in the Lord. They rest peacefully. Let me tell you a story about fear that happened in Judges 6. Judges 6 talks about a man named Gideon. And if we look down, it's starting in Judges 6, and we read verses 1 through 2. It says, The Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord. For seven years, he gave them into the hands of the Midianites. Because of the power of the Midianites was so oppressive, the Israelites prepared shelters for themselves in mountain clefts, caves, and strongholds. They went and hid. They hid themselves because they were being oppressed by a stronger people. And it says, whenever the Israelites planted their crops, the Midianites, the Amalekites, and other eastern people invaded the country. They camped on the land and ruined the crops all the way to Gaza and did not spare a living thing for, for Israel. Neither sheep, nor cattle, nor donkeys. They came up with their livestock, and in their tents like swarms, they, they invaded the land to ravage it. Midian so impoverished the Israelites that they cried out 
to the Lord for help. Now, now, now remember in the beginning, it says the Israelites did evil, but they, they realized that their only source of hope was God, so they cried out for God. And when the Israelites cried out to the Lord because of the Midian, he said, he sent them a prophet who said, this is what the Lord, this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says, I brought you up out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. I rescued from you from the hands of the Egyptians, and I delivered you from the hand of all of your oppressors. I drove them out before you and gave you their land. I said to you, I am the Lord your God. Do not worship gods of the Amorites in whose land you live. But you have not listened to me. The angel of the Lord came and sat down under the oak of Ephraim that belonged to Joash the Eberites, where his son Gideon was threshing wheat in a wine press to keep it from the Midianites. When the angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon, he said, The Lord is with you, you mighty warrior. Now you got to understand, Gideon here was doing a very dumb thing because when you're threshing wheat, you don't go into a small wine press that's hidden. First, you got to carry all this wheat into this, this place that's, that's not easy to get to. It's small, and normally when you're threshing wheat, you want these big, wide open spaces so you can do a lot of wheat at one time. But Gideon went and hid into this small wine press, and he was, he was working really, really hard because of fear. It would have been dumb to normally do that. Fear makes you do dumb things at some times. It makes you work really hard. And most of the time, fear makes you really ineffective. And this is the man that God is calling a mighty warrior? It goes on in 13 to say, Sir, Gideon replied, If the Lord is with us, why has all this happened to us? And where are all the miracles our ancestors told us about? Didn't they say the Lord brought us up out of Egypt, but now the Lord has abandoned us and given us into the hands of the Midianites? The Lord turned to him and says, Go with the strength you have and rescue Israel from the Midianites. I am sending you. But Lord Gideon replied, how can I rescue Israel? My clan is the weakest in the whole tribe of Manasseh, and I am the least in my entire family. And the Lord said, I will be with you, and you will destroy the Midianites as if you were fighting against one man. But let me tell you, God never leaves you, and he never forsakes you. He has a plan for your life. It's a plan to prompt prosper you. It's a plan to bring hope. The question is, is will you trust him enough for that to happen? Will you trust him enough to be like Gideon, to be willing to be that mighty warrior God's called you to be? The other thing here is, when you read this passage of text, did God ever answer Gideon of why all this happened? You ever felt like things happen? You don't understand why? Because you've been doing the right things, maybe. You've been living the right way, but things happen in your life. And you're going, God, why? See, God didn't answer Midian and tell him why. Because it wasn't Gideon's place to know. Because Gideon wasn't the Lord. See, us as humans, we're, we, it's like we're walking in a forest. All we can see are the trees in front of us, the trees around us, the trees to the left and to the right. But God is like standing on the mountain looking over it. He can see the trees that are around us and, and the land that's before us. He can see the things that are behind us, things to the left and to the right. He's not just focused in, in this small area. God knows the beginning to the end. God chose Gideon, not because he was the best or the brightest, not because he had the most talent, not because he was the best looking, the most qualified. God picked Gideon because Gideon, he knew Gideon would go when he asked him to. 
And not only that, he also knew that by picking Gideon, God would get all the glory. Are you willing to give God all the glory in your life? Are you willing to say yes when God asks you to do something? Because I will promise you, when God calls you to do something amazing, most of the time you're not going to have the resources, the talent, or the knowledge to accomplish it. But because God doesn't call the equipped, He equips the called. And most of the time, God-sized visions go beyond what we can do because that's not, if we could do it on our own, why would we need God to help us? And I will promise you this, Gideon had a lot of fear. But the one thing he wasn't afraid of was to tell God what he was actually thinking. He said, God, why would you pick me? You are, that is not right. Do you know who I am? And God said, yes, because I made you. See, God knows exactly who you are. He knows exactly what you will do. He knows your heart. God formed you in your mother's womb. He knew you from the beginning, and he knows what he can do through you if you are willing. Not only did if you, this is what I would encourage you to go. Go read the rest of the story in Gideon. It is amazing what God did through him. Not only did God call Gideon to take over the Midianites who had this massive army, God wouldn't even let Gideon use his best and his brightest to go fight him. No, God, God asked him to whittle down all of the, all of the best and get rid of them because God was going to use the least to do the greatest. You ever felt like you were the least? Let me tell you, God's got to work for your life. God has a plan for your life. God's got hope for your life. And we're fighting a real enemy. And the enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy. But God... Whenever you think you're not good enough, you're not smart enough, don't have enough resources, let me tell you, there is a God who does. See, the enemy wants to keep you hiding in the wine press. He wants to keep you scared. He wants to, he wants to overwhelm you with fear. Let me tell you, God has already won that battle, and he is victorious. I don't know what you're going through this morning. I don't know what the Midianite in your life is that's trying to keep you oppressed. I don't know what the situation is that's trying to keep you hidden and, and working twice as hard and, and being less effective. But let me tell you what, we've got a God who loves you and wants the best for your life. He wants you to come out of your wine press and he wants to call you a mighty warrior this morning. I can promise you this, it doesn't matter how you got in your wine press or, or why or what what things have happened in your past, maybe what you have done or maybe what somebody else has done to you. It said Israel had done evil. That was the reason the many nights had oppressed them. But when they cried out to God, God was still there. He never left them, nor he forsaked them. God never, he never backed up on his promises that he had told Israel. What are the promises that God has spoken in your life this morning? What are the things that you may think are, are lost and gone? Because God wants to revive that. He wants to awaken those in your life. God wants to call you out of that wine press. See, fear wants to keep you down, but faith wants to help you rise up. Now, you, don't under, you may say, you don't understand where I'm at, what I've done. It does not matter, I promise you. I don't know how. Neither did Gideon. Gideon had no idea how he would be able to overtake this mighty army that was coming. But God did. And when you are willing to accept the calling that God does in your life, God's going to do great things. See, Gideon was looking for all these miracles that the people had told him about in the past, and God was about to do a greater, bigger miracle in a different way. So I'm telling you, don't be looking at what may have happened or what the miracles that you may think, because I'm telling you, in your life today, God wants to do a greater, bigger miracle, new thing, because God is always doing a new thing. 
I can also tell you this. On the other side of every valley, there's a mountaintop waiting for you to be for you to experience. The question is, is are you willing to go and are you willing to climb that mountain? Psalms 37, 23 and 24 says this, The Lord directs the steps of the godly. He delights in every detail of their lives. Though they stumble, they will never fall, for the Lord holds them by the hand. See, God's got you, and he delights in every detail of your life. If you're willing to let him, will you release the faith that God wants to activate in your life. See, too often what we do is we look at our abilities, we look at our resources, we look at, we look at our talents, and we're thinking, what can I do with what I've got? And what God is wanting to say is, what can you do when you let me work through you? But are you willing? See, you may say, I've got faith. Pastor, I've got faith that will move mountains. That's great, but will you let your faith move you this morning? You can move mountains, but will, it, will you let it move yourself? See, Gideon could have said, yes, Lord, I know who you are. And he could have stayed right there in the wine press until God had provided all the things that he needed to know about and had all the plan laid out before. But God would have never done that. He wanted Gideon to get up and go first. So you may say, man, if I had the finances to do this, if I had the ability to do this, or when God gives me the knowledge to do that, I'll do it. That's not what God's wanting from you. He's wanting you to have enough faith to step out and go before you know. See, Peter would have never, Peter would have never been able to walk on water if he wasn't willing to get out of the boat first. You've got to have faith that will move you. So what's God calling you to this morning? Are you willing to go? Are you tired of hanging out in the wine press? Are you tired of being oppressed? Are you tired of letting the enemy win the battles? Are you ready to see God release the miracles in your life? Are you willing and are you ready to become the mighty warrior God's called you to be? What's the vision and the dream that you want to, that God has spoken early on to you that, that you haven't seen manifest yet? Are you ready for that to happen in your life? Because God's calling you to come up out of that wine press and trust Him and see what happens. The first step in that is you've got to know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior if you want to see that happen in your life. Are you willing to trust God? So you, you may say, well, I knew God at one time, but I walked away. Today's the day to come back to that relationship. Or you may say, I, I've heard about Jesus, but I, I don't really know him. I don't have that personal relationship. Today's the day. God wants to do something great in your life. He wants to have a relationship with you. That's the greatest miracle ever. The king of the universe wants to communicate directly with you. What an amazing opportunity. So if you're ready this morning and you don't know Jesus, today's the day to make that right. It starts with a prayer. And not just a prayer, but a prayer and a belief. Are you you ready to trust Jesus? If you are, pray this prayer after me and mean it. Father God, I am a sinner. And I ask you to forgive me of my sins. I ask you to become Lord of my life and take the reins. Lead me and guide me as you know that I need to go in the ways that I need to go. I do believe that Jesus was born of a virgin, died on a cross, and he rose from the dead to save me from my sins. And I'm asking you this morning to forgive me and you take control. God, 
God, give me the strength and the ability to carry out the vision that you have for my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, let me tell you, if you made that decision this morning, we want to know about it. I want you to connect with us at the email below. Let us know because we want to walk this journey out. We want to celebrate with you. We want to shout. We want to, we want to do life with you. We've got a plan for you. and We want to get you plugged in with some great people that will be there for you. Because this journey is better together. Also, if you're willing and ready to, to, to get started in this great adventure, or maybe that God is calling you to something that you don't need, that that you know that you're ready to release in your life and you're like, I just don't know how to get started. I want you to connect with us at the email address below as well because we've got a way to plug you in to, to, to some great opportunities in our church. And if you're willing to step up and you're willing to start releasing some of your faith, we want to come alongside it. We, we want to we give you a plan and a, and a purpose and a way to serve other people because that's where you start. And once you start serving other people and serving God's children, God does these amazing things and he starts releasing other things for you to take charge of in your life. So connect with us. Because I know when we walk in a unified vision, God wants to release these unbelievable miracles in all of our lives. And I'm ready. Are you? So connect with us. But before we go today, I, I do want to say this. Thank you for joining us this morning. I know you've got a lot of opportunities to, to in, engage in a lot of different ways in a lot of different churches, and I, and I appreciate you joining us personally here at Crossroads. I do pray that God overwhelms you with blessings, that he goes before you, that he makes your path straight, and that he opens up the windows of heaven and he pours out blessings that you can't even contain.